is uh, evaluate um, these given logarithms. And I wrote up a kind of list of four properties for logarithms that might be helpful in solving these logarithms, or they might not. Um, but the main important thing to be able to solve logarithms is we have to know what a logarithm is. So we have to remember that all a logarithm is, it's, a, it's an exponent. And what that exponent means is, um, let's just write up a simpler one here. What it means is, you know, 5 raised to what exponent is, or what number is going to give me 25. So therefore, we know the answer is going to be 2, okay? So that's all, ex that's all a logarithm is. It's just your base raised to what number gives you what you're evaluating in your log. So here, we have a natural log. And one thing you need to remember, what is a natural log? Why do we have natural logs and we have regular logs? Well, remember, all a natural log tells us is that our base is going to be E. And we don't write it, it's like the same thing why we don't write the square root of four. We don't write that there's a little two right there or that my four is raised to the one half or raised to the first power because we don't have to. We, we, we just kind of, we assume that we're doing a square root unless we write something else, we know that the, uh, we're gonna take the square root. Same thing for ln, we're not gonna use the natural log unless we're using a base e. So there's no point in writing in the base at a time. However, it is helpful to write in the base because that's going to help us understand my answer. Let's forget about this 3 here for a second. And if I just think of a logarithm in terms of what I previously said, log base 5 of 25 means 5 raised to what number gives you 25? So if I say ln, or I'm sorry, e raised to what number gives you e, you should understand that that answer is going to be 1, right? So what happens if I put a 3 as an exponent up there? Um, and a very, you know, a big misconception is students would say, well, this answer is still 1 because 1 cubed is 1. Well, be careful. If we look at this, we say, you know, a to the base a raised to a is equal to 1. Well, there's something about logarithms, though, that when we evaluate, when we have an exponent and it's inside of our logarithm, right? See, this is part of the logarithm. So whenever we have a logarithm or an exponent inside of our function, we can put that in front. So I could rewrite this as... 3 ln of e. Well, I know that ln of e is equal to 1. So really, this is 3 times 1, which is equal to 3. So the answer to ln base e of e is just going to equal 3, as this cancels out to 1. Um, and that's just, you know, very easily depicted here in uh, my property number 3. Over here, I have a negative number. It's the exact same thing. This is going to cancel out the 1, which is going to leave me a negative 2. Again, it's not 1 raised to the negative second power. If I wanted to write it like that, it would be something like this. All right, That would raise out 1 to the negative second power. I don't have parentheses here, though. I have an e to the negative second power. So that's telling me I can take my negative 2, put it in front, and multiply negative 2 times ln of e, which is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Here, um, I have a 1 over e. Now, I love to do this, these types of problems because what I notice on these are students always get mixed up with these and they're like, oh my god, I hate these types of problems. Well, actually, you just remind me. Thank you. I'm going to do another problem. So here, uh, we can't. We haven't learned anything with doing with fractions or um, you know rational uh, terms. But what I do know is I can always rewrite a rational term as um, as a whole term by putting my denominator as my numerator and just put it into the negative exponent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as e to the negative first power. Or I'll just rewrite the whole thing ln as e to the negative first power. Therefore, now I have that negative 1. We know from my previous two problems that's going to cancel out, and it's just going to leave me a negative 1. Here, now I'm dealing with logarithms. Well, logarithms are the exact same thing, it just except now I have a base. Well, here my base is a variable, but guess what? It's not going to change anything. We're still going to follow the same patterns that we've been using. So whenever I have my base, raised to what I'm evaluating for, it's going to equal 1. Or if, it, or if 
that is raised to an exponent, I can always bring that exponent front and multiply across. So therefore, this was going to cancel to 1, and I'm just left with 5. And then my last and final problem that I decided to create was, let's say I have the log base 5 with the square root of 5. So how am I going to work with this now? Well, to work with this problem, um, I don't know what to do with the square root of 5. I really don't. Um, but I do know I can. I do know what to do when I have a radical and I'm sorry when I have a exponent because that exponent I can always bring it to the front. Or if this is going to cancel out, I'm going to be left with my exponent. So I'm going to say, can I can I rewrite the square root of five as an exponent? And the answer is yes. I can rewrite this as log base five of five to the one half power because the square root of five is the same thing as five raised to the one half power. Now, I have my half as my exponent. I know this from my previous problems are all going to cancel out, and I'm just left with one half. So that's how you use the properties of logarithms to simplify. Or I guess not simplify, but evaluate a logarithm.